Good evening, everybody. Good evening. So glad you are here again. So we will touch another subject, but you know, like a, like anywhere else, I, one of the things that I learned is in this life, everything requires a test. I know some people came the first night, and some people didn't, but all, I think all of you got the first version. Remember when we started the first time? The first day was? It was a prophecy about the end of the world. It was an overview. Similar like a, when the students get to the first day of class, you have an overview of everything. And we saw a consecutive kingdom, right? Remember which one the first one was? Babylon. The second one? Middle Persia. Then? Greece. Then? Rome. Then what happened? He divided the ten kingdoms, the same as our ten toes, right? And what happened? What was the metal at that time? It was iron mixed with iron clay. What was, we said, what was the clay? Whose both clay represent? God's people, right? And, uh, and who represent the iron? the state, the civil powers, the political powers, right? And we see them trying to be together, right? Yes. It's okay to have something joint like that? No. It would be weird to have a, a combination of those things when you order a piece of metal and it comes with clay in there. It will broke in pieces. That's not right. In other words, spiritually, that's illegal. So basically, there will be an illegal attempt to align the church with the state power of the last church. And remember, what's the final kingdom after that? You see the stone that comes and hits the feet of this metal man, and everything breaks apart. Is that right? And this is the final kingdom. It's the kingdom of Jesus Christ. So, and then we move, I think the next slide was presented about the image. There was an image. And there is stories going to repeat. Because as we study Revelation, same thing that happened in the time of Daniel is going to happen on the last day. Remember the king Nabucodonosor, he raised an image of gold. And he asked people to worship. Do we have the same thing in Revelation? Revelation 13, right? In Revelation 13, we have one beast coming out from the sea, waters, and the second beast coming from the earth, right? And this second beast coming from the earth has to build an image to the first beast, and then what it, what it does is ask to worship that beast. Okay, so if the story is going to repeat, yes. Going to repeat. Then we talk about yesterday Armageddon, basically telling us what? Is this world getting better? No. Same like we saw in the dream of this king Nabucodonosor. The first metal, what was the head? Gold. Gold. The second, the chest and arms? Silver. Then the belly and thighs? Bronze. Bronze. So, how is the quality, the value, the metal in those kingdoms? Less. Less value. You see, we see deterioration. And that's what is happening overall in the world. Who are you telling me that it's getting better? It's not getting better, is that right? I remember I arrived in this country, what, 18, 20 years ago? And I remember the first news about one state promoting a gay marriage. Time passed by. One state approved, then two, three, four, five, six, then all of them were approved, then the Supreme Court said, you know, it's not only legal, but if you don't agree with it, and if you don't follow those things, you can be sanctioned for that. Is that right? So what is happening with the Bible principles right now? 
Are they getting better, closer to God, or far away from God? So that's what the rock is going to come and destroy what the humans have been building over the years. So today we are going to study a subject that is key to understanding revelation. And I hope you brought your virus. If not, we have some over there. And uh, let me just overview a few things about this key to understand revelation. How many of you have lost a key of the main entrance of your house? <laughs> What do you do? Oh, you search everywhere that you can think about it. If you were outside, of course, there's your car, the store, your friends, your neighbor, the front yard, the backyard. Is that right? And we hope that eventually you will find it. Well, here Revelation is the same thing because uh, Revelation, let's think about like this. The final work of God for humanity is the final chance that you and me have to fulfill God's desires. And depends on you, not from God. We will see as we go through this subject. So the book of Revelation, we already know, is the book of what? The revelation of Jesus. Jesus, right? We see Jesus, our Elam our sacrifice. We see Jesus as the high priest. We see Jesus as the mighty angel who fights in heaven. We see Jesus as the king of kings and lord of lords. Is that right? And this is important for us. So when we study Revelation, we are going to find that one of the main issues is what? Worship. Right? Worship. Who does the worship? Human beings mean us. What is receiving God? For God is honor and glory to be restored. So worship from human beings and honor and glory for God needs to be restored. But at the same time when we do worship, when we see worship in the book of Revelation, we see what? Service. And when we do worship, what it needs to be present? Spirit and truth. And depends when we do worship, somehow we do some sort of service. And this is for us important. When we study prophecy, one of the things we need to figure out is in what kind of process the prophecy I am living right now. Remember when we study the the dream of this king now to know from Daniel Kuhn? Which part of this statue we are right now? The toes? Maybe we are just hanging from the toenails. <laughs> it's just the coming is soon. It's imminent the coming of Jesus. So the other thing that I need to know, what kind of prophecy is, I need to know in which side of prophecy I am myself, because otherwise I can be in trouble. Let's go and read one Bible verse. Um, I hope you brought your Bibles. Let's see the book of Romans. Romans chapter 1. Let's go and read what it says. Romans chapter 1. Let's read verse 25. Remember, we are looking for this key, and as we, as we found it, we need to go back and forth. Let's see, verse 25. Look at what happened here. In Romans 1, 25, it reads, Who changed the truth of God into what? I. And worship and serve the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Can you see that worship is together with service? If we are not worshiping in the right way, the right God, we are going to be doing the wrong service. And even Jesus warned us about it. Let's go and 
to our own in the Gospel of John. Look at what it says, John chapter 16. Because this is what is, I truly believe is that the doors of happening. Let's go ahead and start verse 1. And he said, These things have I spoken unto you that you should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yeah, the time come that whosoever what kill you will think that what he do that service. So do I need to know in which side, as I study prophecy, I am positioning myself? Because I might be thinking that I am worshiping God. But very soon, I may be in the wrong side. And we know that there is only two positions. In the spiritual things, there is only two positions. We see that, remember, in Matthew 25, where Jesus speaks about this parable. He divides on the right hand the sheep, and who put on the other side? The goats, right? When Jesus was on the cross, there was one thief on the right, who repented and accepted Jesus, and there was another thief on the left side. So there is no middle ground. So that's what is important for us. When we worship, we need to worship in what? Spirit, Spirit and truth. So this is important as we study the book of Revelation. So this is the main one point. Then the next point is what? Dealing with sin. So this is going to you find repetitive in the book of Revelation. Let's see. If you study chapter 2 and chapter 3 of Revelation, what would you find in there? You will find the message to what? To the seven churches. What do they represent, those messages? That represent the work of Jesus throughout the Christian world. So, you have to position yourself in which church you are living. Most of the world right now are living on the last church, what is called the Laodicean church. Just by the fact that you are here makes me believe that we are in need for something. So it looks to me like you don't belong to that church. I'm so glad for that. Amen. Is maybe the one before. What is called the one before? Philadelphia Church. If it was a church, it was a church that was consecrated. God did not have any reproofs against that church. So the same thing. And if you keep the studying in Smyrna, Ephesus, and everything, you will find in that message how Jesus gave message to them to well. To lead them to overcome. So he makes commandments to them for the good things that they do. But also he does what? He has indignant, indignant uh, words for those churches. He has reproof for those churches. He, he has promises for those churches. And he said, if you overcome. If you read each one of those, you will understand. And you will see how Jesus deal with sin, right? And then if you just move to, let's see, for example, Revelation chapter 18. Remember what Revelation chapter 18 says? It speaks about Babylon. We will know what Babylon means. But let me tell you, in the, in the dream of this King Nebuchadnezzar, the head was of gold, represented Babylon, right? If you look history, Babylon was distinguished for something. Number one, they were worshipping the sun. Number two, they were centered on the exaltation of men. And they were promoting human instructions and teaching. So those traces are going to be carried out because in the book of Revelation, chapter 14, 
chapter 18, you will find the word Babylon. And remember what is the message in Revelation 18? Babylon is fallen. Come out of it, my people. Did you see? This is how Jesus is dealing in Revelation with sin. He said, if you don't come out of Babylon, what is it? You are going to be partakers of their sins, right? And the plagues is going to fall upon you. Same thing. There is something called the mark of the beast. He said, whoever received the mark of the beast, he will receive the plagues of God. So did you see how Jesus in Revelation, you are going to find the dealing with sin. He deals with mercy, with love, with compassion. He's looking for worship. Because in the book of Revelation, as we told you, this beast is going to ask to worship who? The first beast. And let's see, because history repeats. Remember when Jesus was going through these temptations? What was one of the temptations that Satan asked Jesus to do? If you kneel to me, right? So he was asking Jesus to worship Satan. Is that right? So worship is an issue in the past and is going to be in the future. So beside worship and dealing with sin, the other thing we will see in Revelation is what? Word. And this word is not well. Heaven. If we read, read Revelation 12, 7, 9, what it says? It says, there was war in heaven. Michael and the angels fought with the dragon and his angels. There was no more place found for them in heaven. And what it says? And then the dragon and the angels, they were what? Cast out from heaven. So where was this war? When you listen to that, the first time that I listened to that, I cannot imagine what in heaven. Because heaven is what? You imagine the most holy people is there, is that right? But that's what the Bible said. But this is the story cannot repeat. But this is what happened. And then if you go to after Revelation 12, you go to Revelation 12, 17, what is it? And the dragon was what? He raised with the woman, and he went to make what? War. war with the rest of her seed, of her offspring. And who are they? The ones who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. You see, that in Revelation, you will find several words. But let's go and see what it says in, in, in the book of Romans 7.23. In Romans 7, 23, we see that this word is a little deeper than what we think. Because here Paul is describing something. If you have your Bibles open, you can follow and verify. But I see another law in my members. And what is doing this law in my members, meaning my flesh, the old man, what is doing? He's warring against what? The law of my mind. I read the Bible, I like those things that I see in the Bible that I put in my head, but my flesh is in war with this word of God. And look at what it says here. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Did you see when, when men fight with those evil forces, what is man for that? You see, and Paul then later said, Praise be to Jesus, that to him I can have faith. Mm -hmm. And this is what is for us. But you will find, in the book of Revelation, you will find a lot of words. And what do you think is the reason for the world? Because they want you to worship their own God. What is the world? Because they want you to be in sin. Jesus don't want us to be in sin. Is that right? Jesus wants to worship love and him. But this word in heaven keeps moving. 
from head to earth and to earth in your mouth. We found something else. Not only we found worship, we don't only find the dealing of sin, we don't only find war, but we also find what? Victory. Victory. So who is the final winner in all these wars? Jesus. Does that give you reassurance? That you give your life to Jesus? See, that's the big reason. That's what we never need to be afraid. We are not afraid of the wars because what? The winner is Jesus. And if I give my life to Jesus, all I have to do is follow him. Is that right? Amen. So, but also, he wants the victory to be rich by two. And the church is made by two. By men. So basically, the victory that we need to obtain is what? Did you see now that as we are developing, we see two main matters, worship and sin. That creates worlds. That creates uh, not only victory, but if somebody wins, what it means that? That there is somebody that is going to lose, is that right? So then, the next thing that comes in Revelation, you will find what? Judgment. But here we will find a different type of judgment. You know, it's very typical, if you go to the court of law, somebody's arrested, or somebody suspected of committing murder or any criminal situation, first, it's enough to suspect somebody to be a criminal to be arrested? No, you need to have what? evidence. You need to have proofs, right? And I've seen sometimes cases that it takes one, two, three, four, five years for the police to find evidence that I killed that person, right? And after you find the evidence, what happened? You take him to a preliminary court where then the judge decides, okay, this man is to be in jail. And then gives time to the prosecutor and to the defense lawyers to prepare their case. He's not arrested and the trial will start next day. There is certain time, is that right? Mm -hmm. Because the lawyer, the one who is going to defend, needs time to investigate. Because if he found that he's guilty, the lawyer will say, you know what? At all the evidence point that you're guilty, so you better confess and just tell them that you're repentant. Is that right? Well, and then what happened? It comes the trial. And after the trial finished, what is going to come up after the judgment? The sentence. Right? And once it comes the sentence, that's it, that penalty. Does the person die next day? No, there is a period still. But here in Revelation, you will find that sentences are going to come right there. Why? Because that's the conclusion of the earth history. The world is going to finish. So as you read uh, the book of Revelation, you will find that the, the dragon, the beast, the false prophet are going to be thrown into the lake of fire. So judgment is given to them and the sentence is coming there. And the other thing is, People who follow them will be also effective descendants if I'm there. So, but the other thing, remember, judgment is individual. So, 2 Corinthians 5.10 is a Bible verse that it says, We all have to what? Appear in front of what? The judgment seat of Jesus Christ. How many? All. Oh. So, so that's what when you read from, uh, the book of Revelation, you will find judgment. But the difficult part, this is not an investigative phase. This is sentence to carry and be effective. So that's what we need to be very careful. That's what we study in Revelation is just remembering the final stages how God is dealing with all these issues.
But then there is something very, very important. Because, uh, you know, God is merciful. Is Jesus walking on the air right now, preaching the gospel? Who is using right now? He's using the ones who said that they are Christians, right? And in the book of Revelation, you will find a mission. Let's go to the book of Revelation, just to use an example. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 10. In Revelation chapter 10, let's read only let's read verses 9, 10, and 11. Revelation chapter 10 says, And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the mirror book. And he said unto him, Take it and eat it up. And it shall make thy belly what? Bitter. But it shall be what in thy mouth? Sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth, sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must what? Prophesy again before many people and nations and tongues and kings. Matthew 24, he was given this mission to Christians. But here in Revelation 10, he said, you know what? You guys need to prophesy again. Because history is repeated. I tell you to this, people do the other thing. It's written here to do this, but people are changing it, and they believe it, and they are following different things. So it's time to prophesy again. But let's keep moving. Let's go to Revelation chapter 14. We didn't mention much, but in Revelation you will find a lot of angels. Okay. Let's go and read in Revelation chapter 14. Let's go and read verse 6 and 7. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven. Having what? Everlasting, Everlasting God. To preach unto whom? All of them who dwell on the earth. To every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. You see, in Revelation chapter 10, it says, you need to prophesy again to every nation, tongue, and nation. Countries, right? Here we see that this angel is covering the gospel again to fulfill what he was asked in Revelation 10. So who do you think is this angel? Is a real angel or you think it's people? people? This is people, right? Let's read in verse 7. So number one, we see the everlasting gospel. Is that right? Highlighted in that verse in your Bible. Verse 7. Saying with a loud voice, Fear God and what? Give glory to Him. What it means that give glory to Him? Remember what we said about giving glory to Him means what? Worship. Right? Fear God and give glory to Him for the hour of what? Judgment is come. Did we see judgment as we presented? Here is in the message. Part of the message for the last time is that judgment will come or what in what time is you can read it if judgment is come this is already going on as we are speaking this judgment is happening is not will come because when you read second corinthians 5 10 said everybody will appear future but here no here is present. Why? Because this is the final stage of the life of the world. And keep reading. For the hour of his judgment and come, and then highlight the important points. See what it says? Worship, Worship him that made what? Heaven, earth, sea, fountains of water. When he says, Worship him that made, what other words we can find? 
Worship the Creator. Is that right? Okay, so we are getting we are getting clear about it. Do we see the issue of worship in the book of Revelation? Yes. Do we see the issue of judgment? Yes. Do we see the issue of the truth, the everlasting gospel? That means worship in the spirit and in truth. Right? Yeah. Let's keep reading. Verse 8. And then follow another angel saying, Babylon is falling. Is falling. The great city. Because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So what it means here on this? Remember what we said Babylon in the old times? You remember who was the founder of Babylon? Nimrod, right? What happened when he died? He was the leader of Babylon. When he died, the story said that he became the son. So Babylon worshipped the son. Okay. And then he had a wife called Sendiradis. And she said one time she became pregnant with a child. Right? And then when she died, they said she became the moon. So they start worshiping the sun, the moon, and different things. And the other thing that they loved in Babylon, what was the man represented Babylon? Gold. In Babylonian culture, gold, exhibition, calling the attention, exalting human beings was something a common practice in them. And uh, they always wanted to be prominent. That's what Nebuchadnezzar, when he made the image to worship, what was the material that he used? Oh. All gold, right? He just wanted to be himself, live for eternity. And this is what happened. So those traces are going to be present in this body. Do you think that it's going to carry the true gospel? Yeah. No. So judgment is given against Babylon. We will find it in the book of Revelation. And what is going to happen with Babylon according to what we read here in verse 8? Oh. It's falling, right? And he makes drink of the what? Do you have your papers? What it means why in prophecy? False doctrines, false teachings are not sustained, supported by God's word. And it's important to be living by God's word. Well, how did Jesus overcome Satan when he was tempted? He said, I am the son of man, I'm sorry, don't get involved with me, out of here. <laughs> he said, what? It is, it is written. It's not enough to say, kneeling and praying, no, no, that's, it's important. But that, that's not the way that Jesus showed us to defeat the enemy. He said, what is the best way? It is written. You see, when you go to the judgment seat, right, if you are going to say, I came one time, a guy went to a judge and said, why did you do that? Why did you drop the car and you hear it in that word when that person told you to do it? Do you think that's a good reason? Well, the judge said, you know what? He told him about insult. You are just out of your mind. Because if somebody asked if you jump from the third floor, would you do it? Or none of that thing. And see, those are excuses. When we said because somebody told you. But if you come to the court and you said, look at I have this paper. He signed it. He gave me permission to do that. And he told me to do this and this and this. The judge see it and said, hey, did you sign this? You give me permission? Okay. Your case is dismissed. Because it is written. It is important for us to learn to live by God's word. Amen. Not for what my mom told me. I'm sure she had good intentions. Not for what my pap, my daddy told me, right? It has to be because it is written. And that's the way to go. So, let's keep reading. Because it keeps getting a little more, more serious. Now we know that this Babylon is full of false teachings. 
we will develop a little bit more as we go in the next night, verse 9. And then it comes what? The third angel follows them, saying, with a loud voice. What it means with a loud voice? Is important or is not important? It's very important. Saying, if, if any man, what? You see, we come to the same issue. If any man worship what? The beast. beast. And what else? Yeah. His image. And receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. Verse 10. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Is that a nice thing to happen? Should I study and pray, Lord, show me what is the beast? Should I know that very well? Should I know what is the mark of the beast? Yes. I should know. But remember, we lost the key. We need to be looked back and forth. Right? Nobody puts a key on the door and leaves the key in the door, right? Because God wants to test. If you are interested in knowing His Word, He wants to test you if you are interested in reading and praying and asking for wisdom. But we know this one that is a very important because there is going to be a truth that is going to be overcome. Because let's keep reading here. In verse 12, here is what? Passion of the saints. Here are they that what? In the commandments of God, in the faith of Jesus. It's very important to keep that commandment. It's very important to have the faith of Jesus. No doubt about it. But then, then see, because look at how close is those events to something coming. Look at what he said. Verse 13. And I hear a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, yes, and the Spirit, that they may rest on their labors and their works do follow them. Verse 14. And I look, and behold a white cloud. And upon the cloud said, Like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand, what? Shall see. Who is this son of man coming in the cloud? Jesus. Jesus. Is the issue of the mark of the beast an issue of the last days before Jesus comes? Yes, it's right after. Is keeping God's commandment going to be an issue of the last days? Yes. Definitely, we see it right there. And remember, those are the revelation of Jesus for you and for me. So, do we have a mission in Revelation? Yes. Presently. This mission implies your work, my work. That mission implies warning to the people. And if I don't follow that, because in, in Revelation 10 said, we need to do it again. And this is very serious. What happens if I neglect that mission? How serious do you think it's going to be? Then maybe at the, at the end of the times, when we show up to the judgment seat, said, I told you, I show you, what have you done? You should tell people what is the gospel. You should tell people about judgment. You should tell people that they need to worship the Creator. You should tell people who is Babylon. You should tell people, you should tell them who is the beast, what is the mark of the beast, why you didn't tell them. What you are going to say. Is there going to be excuses on that day? No. no. So that's what we find in Revelation. Worship. Dealing with sin. We found judgment. We find words. We found mission. And remember, in this world, there are two groups. Is that right? On one side, you have God the Father, God the Son, 
God the Holy Spirit, you have the angels, and you have men willing to commit to the mission. On the other side, you have to say, say. Does the Bible say that the angels were cast out from heaven? So he has saved them. His angels, let's think. Mary Magdalene in the Bible said, How many evil spirits were cast out from heaven? Seven. So those evil spirits are real. When Jesus went and removed one evil spirit, he killed this man in this land. They asked him, What do you want, Jesus? And Jesus asked him, What is your name? What was the name? Legion. In that time of the Roman Empire, you know what it means? One legion? Minimum 500 soldiers. Wow. Did you see that? He had to throw him into the, the forks. You see, those are real. And in Ephesians, you will find when he said, We don't fight against what? Blood and flesh. We are fighting against what? Principal, powers on the air. You see, those are the things uh, that we need to be aware of. If I, the only thing is Jesus allows us to use the Holy Spirit. He allows us to use truth. We need to be patient. We need to appeal to freedom. But Satan, what are the merits of Satan? Of course. Oh, deception. Jesus said in Matthew 24, Lord, what are the signs of, that the, this world is going to finish? Be careful not to be deceived. So did you see, that's what a lot of lies are going around. And it's your duty, my duty, to search what is written. And once I found what is written, what do I need to do? Submit to it. Because if I don't submit to him, I am on the other side. Because do you think that the devil knows all the Bible? Yes. That he trembles, but he doesn't know it. And that's important for us. So, and do you think that the story is going to repeat? Oh yeah, it's going to repeat. We studied two, two presentations before about this image. Well, Revelation 13 talks about two beasts. One is going to be the image of the beast. Right? Here said Ecclesiastes 1 9. The thing that have been, it is that it shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under. Do you think that Satan is using the same trick? Yes. No doubt about it. There is a presentation that is called The Day that Satan was baptized. Okay. <laughs> the day that Satan was baptized. Don't miss that part. Because you will see Satan in the old times. He was first tried to deceive people by ignorance. Let's see. He prohibited people to have the Bible. They can know, they could not reach the Bible. If as we are right now, we were moved to around 1200, we would be ready to be burned outside. Okay? He was appealing to ignorance. Then, people as they were challenging him more and more, well, let's get rid of them. And they start killing people. What do you think that they killed Jesus? They couldn't keep it quiet saying the truth. And if he keeps talking, well, let's kill him. That's what they did. Is that right? Well, but then they realized that as they were killing faithful people, more were coming out. So what did the devil decide? I'm just going to kill him. And the devil entered into the churches. So the story is going to repeat. Another one, 315 in the same book. 
that which has been is now and that which is to be has already been and God requires that which is past. So something in the past already to be pronounced to us. In the book of Revelation, in chapter 1, we see here that is the main person in the prophecies and revelation is who? And when he talks about in talk to John, he's talking about what? Things which what? Shortly take place. You see, that's what I'm trying to tell you when we start the revelation. It's just the final conclusions. How God deals with humanity, with sin and everything. And he said, and signified by his angel to his servant John. And John was a very faithful person. Let me tell you. He was a good witness. He gave a good testimony of Jesus. And he really was speaking and writing the things that he saw. He, you could not convince him of anything different. So when you study the, the Gospel of John, you will find things that you won't find in other Gospels. Because John was touched by the law of God. And it's very impressive when you read that. But also in the book of Revelation, you will find blessings. Blessed is he that reads and read and read the words of this prophecy. But most important, what? Keep those things which are written there for the time is at hand. What good it makes to, for you to hire somebody to work in your house and say, please, you know, I want you to do this, please, this, and that. You come eight hours later and you decide to do something different. What would you do with that person? You will hire him for the rest of the month? No. Right? Well, that's important. It's for us, is you need to keep it. Nothing, if I read it and I hear it and I keep it in my head, we will be like the parable of the foolish virgins, remember? Five were foolish and five were wise. They were virgins. What do you mean virgins? They have the pure doctrine. They knew the truth. But at the very end, when when, the, when Jesus comes, what he said? I don't know you. No. They knew the truth. They had the pure doctrine. But Jesus said, I know you. Because in order to keep the things, we need to come every day to Jesus to ask for his help. And as we come to him, you know, it's like a student goes to the class, right? But only one student from among the 50 goes regularly to the teacher. Please, I don't understand this part. Please, can you help me with this? Do you think that the teacher starts knowing the student? He's a person who has curiosity, has for help. But the same thing is with Jesus. Because if we don't come to Him, we won't receive the Holy Spirit. And without the Holy Spirit, we cannot do nothing. And this is why it's important to keep the things. Also, and this is eternal life. That you what? No. Know you the only true God in Jesus Christ who you have sent. So that's why it's important for us to come to Jesus, to keep the blessings, to keep the teachings, to keep every word to proceed out of his mouth is important for us. Because we are entering into the way of what? Eternal life as we know Jesus. But you know, John keeps receiving visions, and in, in this process of receiving visions, he transmitted to us, and look at what you see here. I turn around, this is Revelation 1, 12, 13, I turn around to see the voice that was speaking to me, and when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet, and with a golden sash, with a golden band around his chest. Do you see, when John saw this vision, something came up with his mind. Oh, seven lambs. He remembered that when he was in his Jewish time, there was a place where there was seven lambs. And when we saw the clothing that he had, he said, wow, that's the clothing that the high priest wear when I was in my Jewish house. 
But then the book of Revelation keeps saying more. And another angel came and stood what? Having what? All the sense. And there was given unto him much what? Incense that he should offer it with prayer of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. So that gave a better clues to John. Now he said, now we have seven lamps. We have the altar of incense. And we have the throne. He said, which place do you think he was talking about? He was talking about the sun. But his vision was from where? This is from heaven as he's looking. Because Jesus already is in heaven. But he's looking in heaven and he remembered what he was used to live when he was on earth. Then he saw in 11, said in verse 19, and the temple of God was open in heaven. Wow, that was tremendous. <laughs> so he said, wow, the temple that we used to have here on earth is really from heaven. And there was seen in his temple what? The Ark of the Testament, many translated the Ark of His Covenant. There was lightning and voices and thunder and earthquake and rain came. So basically now he sees everything, almost everything that is needed. And he gets to the clue, this is what I was watching. Because there was a throne, there was an a altar of incense, there was seven lamps, and there was a priest officiating about it. And who was the person that he saw? It was Jesus. So, he said here, after these things I looked in the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony was open, and what else? Seven angels who had the seven flags came out of the temple, clothing living, clean and bright, and girded around their chest with golden sashes. So here we see what they were carrying these angels. Do we see here? Very close, the sentence for a judgment to be cut. You see, this is the thing that we see in the book of Revelation. In the book of Revelation, which, let's not read this one more. The temple was filled with what? From the glory of God. So, who was in the temple that he saw in heaven? The glory of God from his Father. And no one was able to enter the temple till the seven flags of the seven angels were completed. So, but it means what? At one point, if we are faithful, we will be entering into this temple. Do you want to be that? And who is in that temple? Who is dwelling in that temple? Are we planning to live with God? Is that being decided? So, and this is in the book of Hebrews, said, here is the main point. We have what? I priest to sit down in the place of honor beside the throne of the majestic God in heaven. Is that right? Yes. There he ministers in the heavenly tabernacle. The true place of worship that was built by the Lord and not by human hands. This is in the book of Hebrews. So basically, the sanctuary who was on earth, it was a copy of what? Of the true one who was in heaven. And who is in heaven right now? Jesus Christ. And what is he doing? Ministering for you and for me. Interceding for you and for me. As I come every day and say, Lord, you know, I have this problem. I found this defect in my life. I need your help. He is listening to us. He is interceding directly to the Father. And if you made something wrong and you said, Lord, you know what? I seen I made these things wrong. Jesus comes to the Father and said, you know, this my brother, your son, has committed this sin. I know he deserves death, but look at my death on the cross. My blood paid with his death. And he accepts your request, your prayer, your confession. And direct intercession for you and me, our sins are forgiven. Is that beautiful? Yeah. That's what Jesus is doing right now. <clears throat> so, now the things which have spoken in the psalm, we have such a high priest who sat on the right hand of the throne of the mighty in heaven, a minister of the sanctuary, the true tabernacle which the Lord teaches in Noah. You can imagine Jesus coming to, to the Father 
interceding for you, helping us in this time of need. That's why we know that there is a short time left for us, but still Jesus is in this place, ministering for you and for me, because that's what the book of Revelation shows. So basically the early sanctuary was what? house of the sanctuary in heaven. So John, when he saw this high priest clothing, and he recognized that he was talking about the sanctuary on earth, because it was really deep. Here he said, here is a five, who served the copy and shadow of the heavenly things, as Moses was divinely instructed when he was about to make the tabernacle. For he said, see that you make all things according to what? Showing you. So when God gave instructions to Moses, he had to make an exact copy of the vision of the heavenly sanctuary. Okay. So, is that beautiful? We said, why is that God asking to do an early sanctuary? Right? Because you know what? God loves so much his people. God loves you and me and all of us in such a way. He wants to abide with you. He wants to abide with us. And that was the way to bring heaven to earth. You see, this serves as a copy and shadow of heavenly things. Everything represents us in heaven. So, Christ serves as a priest in the true tabernacle. That's what he's doing right now. Levitical priests serves a copy and shadow of heavenly things. The true tabernacle was selected by whom? By the Lord. No man. That's what he said. He was a A copy or a shadow represents one. The truth in origin. Moses was instructed to make the tabernacle according to the pattern, precisely because he represents heavenly realities. You know, let me tell you something. In the Old Testament, this is important for us because I found many people who make mistakes about not paying too much attention to the things in the Old Testament. But uh, a way that sometimes I tell people is like this. Uh, imagine like that you are trying to do CPR, okay? And when you go to class of CPR, how many people usually come? 10, 15, 20, right? Do you like one of those people to jump on your chest and start compressing the two inches? <laughs> Boy, that's not a good thing to do, right? God said, Boy, you guys are not prepared for to know the plan of salvation. So same thing like that. When you do CPR, what do they do? What do they use? They use those dummies, right? For you to get used to that. To start knowing. And you start practicing with those ones. Those are shadows, things or things that you mind. So, but the principle is there. The principle is there. And that's why it's important for us to understand the Old Testament and with wisdom find how you can project it to the New Testament. Let's see. When Jesus came to John the Baptist, what did John the Baptist say? Here is the Lamb who takes away the sin of the world. Who was he talking about? He was talking about Jesus, but he was remembering what? The sanctuary when people were sinning, right? If somebody sinned, need to go and find a little Lamb. And you imagine the sanctuary was in the center, and you were surrounded by the tents. You see, if somebody see you, hey, here goes John with a little lamp. What are the with that? It's committing a sin. So we were pleading to be humble, to go through that process. But he said, oh, no, no, I don't want to with that, I'm sorry. And then it's the sin, and that's the problem. So here is basically the same thing, or reminds us, what do you think about a person, a mother who has not seen a child, and every month, the relatives are sending pictures, and after 10 years, he comes the child, and the mom says, oh, please give me the picture. No, but the child is here. No, give me the picture. <laughs> it sounds 
run even farther instead of it. But you know, this is what happened. When Jesus came, people want to continue doing those things. People want to continue doing sacrifices. He said, give me the picture of the child. I don't want the child. No, but the child is here. Those things were showing you what is going to come. And that was right. So that's what we need to understand the progression, how the plan of salvation works for us. And this, the tabernacle, is one good example of those things. So basically, in this sanctuary, what do you have? You have the courtyard outside, where there was the altar of sacrifice. There was a lever here full of water. And there was this long bed where there was two chambers. One was the holy place, and the other one the most holy place. Here you can see the distribution. In the first chamber, there was what? The lamp of seven arms, table of show bread, with two piles of bread, 12 orbs. Here is the Ark of the Incense. Here you see the Ark of the Covenant, right? Here you see the veil in between. Here you see the door, right? And how many, for how many sides you can enter this sanctuary? Just one. Just one side. That's one way. No other way. If you try to jump on the other side, you are a thief. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, I'm the way. So, the law represents Jesus. And you keep going throughout this sanctuary, represent the whole plan of salvation. So you see here, all the parts that we have described, you know, in this uh, sanctuary. But let's see, what is the work of the society? Here in Texas, in Mexico, 35 Let them make me a sanctuary, you know, like what? So I may dwell among them. You see, Jesus and God wants to spend, now, even now, he wants to do the same thing. He wants to abide with you. And remember what he said about what represents our lands? It's the temple of the Holy Spirit. So I know I need to invite Jesus and God every day, then they do. And here you see, this is what they were the amazing part. That's what they call what? The Shekinah glory. It's the presence of God. You know, and this is beautiful. He wanted to spend time with his people, even though he knew that there was sin, but he was dealing with sin on the courtyard. So, thy way of God is in red. Who is so great a God as our God? So, as we see the sanctuary, we see the holy place, the most holy place, the holy place, and the courtyard. Let me show you here. Jesus came from heaven. He lived a holy life. Is that right? He was the light of the world. He is the bread who came from hell. Jesus was baptized. And Jesus died in the cross. Can you see in the sanctuary the plan of salvation? Yes. And now it comes you and me. And we see, we read and we know the story about Jesus. And then I decide, I'm touched by the Holy Spirit. I decide to give my life to Jesus, but first God said, you need to repent. You need to die to self. So Jesus helped me to die on the cross. And then I go to what? Baptism. So when I do this process, God, I obtain what in the, is called the justification, the forgiving of my sin. Okay? But, what happened here is what? Jesus on the cross paid the penalty of sin. What does the Bible say? The penalty of sin is? Yeah. Death. That means that you are already saved? Not yet. Because now, what do we need to go? We need to enter into this chamber. Right? I need to eat the bread. What represents this bread? Jesus. And Jesus said that it's represented also by his word. Is that right? So this is the time when I need to read the word. And when I read the word, maybe I found it there. You have to forgive 70 times 7. And you said, oh boy, I just, 
I punched my brother yesterday just because he just looked me in the wrong way. <laughs> what do you need to do? Ask forgiveness. Back again. God forgive me, right? And Jesus inherited that intercession. You are forgiven, right? Then next day you find something else in the Bible. You said, oh, I never kill anybody. Well, you read in the Bible, if you get angry with your brother, you see the same of him. Oh, why you didn't know that? Then back again. Is that right? So you might tell you know, I never was an adulterer man, faithful to my wife. But then you open the Bible and you read, hey, you commit adultery even if you look in the wrong way, brother. Then what? Do we need to ask for forgiveness? Yes. yes. How is called this process? This is the process we call sanctification. Because I am receiving the life, I am eating the bread of life, I am receiving the Holy Spirit through, I'm praying every day, I'm studying the Bible, and I'm getting what we call sanctification. Here, I'm, here, I'm having freedom from the power of sin. Amen. And then, time passed by, mm -hmm. and maybe Jesus said, you know, it's about time to take a little further. And then you just keep drawing, and that Jesus is preparing us to have this holy life, you know. And this is very soon, very soon. The same thing as Jesus came through this process, now he's going to take us back to heaven. And then that's what we call glorification. Mm -hmm. The Bible said our bodies will be transformed. Don't you think that is beautiful, this plan of salvation? Is the plan of salvation in the sanctuary? It is. And that's what we see in Revelation, because it's a still an ongoing process. But as we, where is he trying to take you back to? You see, if you want to be on this most holy place, on the Ark of the Covenant, where is the presence of God, what is inside the Ark of the Covenant? What is inside? The law of God. The stones. Where is written by the finger of God, His law. What else is there? The path of man. Right? What else is the rod of Abraham that is power? Those things have a tremendous symbol. But what is the foundation of God's kingdom? Justice, mercy. You see, here you find inside this the character of God. In order for us to see God, what do we need to have? Holiness. And here we need our life needs to be in harmony with this law. And that's why, wherefore the law was our what? Schoolmaster or tutor, have they call it, to bring us what? Unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. It's true. We all agree. We are not saved by keeping the law. Do you agree on that? Right? The Bible says we are not saved by keeping the law. Because that's not the purpose of the law. The purpose of the law is like a, let's see, you go and work with your car and everything, and you come out and you go to the bathroom, you look in the mirror, boy, boy, you look at those big spots on my face, right? And that's what the law is, the mirror. It tells you what is wrong with me. Don't tell me that you grab the mirror and you cling to the mirror. It means you need to go to where? To the water, right? Who represents this world? That's Jesus, right? And that's why the law tells me only what he tells me and leads me to Christ. And say, you are committing a sin, you are dirty, you need help, you need to be cleansed. And first John one night what he said? If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you and what else? And to cleanse you from some oh Christ. Do you see? But I need to know what is my condition. The only one who can tell me what is my condition is the law. And that's in the final part. If we want to be ready to be translated to heaven, my life is to be in heaven. Because that's part of the character. 
for Christ enter not into a holy place made with hands like in apparent to the truth, but into heaven itself, now to appear before what? The face of God for us. This is the time that you and me we have, so we can present to Jesus, asking that we need help. Do you think that is going to be effective? Believe me, it is. So basically in the sanctuary, in the outer court, when they were sacrificing the lamb, who is really representing in this New Testament? Jesus. That was what John the Baptist said here is the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So, you see the problem really is what? Sin. The problem is sin. That's what uh, 1 John 3, 4, he said what? Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law. For sin is what? <laughs> this is what we need to, I mean, when I, I am this, believing this almost for the last 16 years, before that I remember my Bible said, sin is not doing good. Boy, that leaves it so empty. But here is the true translation. So if you want to define sin, sin is the translation of the law. So in Matthew chapter 1, what is said about Christ? Christ came to what? To save his people from what? From sin. Is that right? So I need to make sure that my life is in harmony with what? With the law. Not because the law saved me. Because the law showed my condition, showed my deficiency. Then I go and ask Jesus, not only for the forgiveness, but I ask for the power so I can be obedient. Is that right? Otherwise, we can not obey. And here is what I told you. The next day, John says, Jesus coming unto him and says, Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. The wages of sin is what? Yes. But the gift of God is what? Yes. In whom? Yes. That's what he says, Romans 6, 23. So, is there a serious problem with sin? Yes. Sin needs to be out of our lives. If we confess our sin, he is what? Yes. 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 to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from our unrighteousness. So, Christ is what? Yes. Jesus Christ has paid the penalty already for your sins and my sins. But as I come to him, that's for the things of the past. But what happened now for the things in the future? Right? You don't know what you're going to do tomorrow for the next week, right? So here, that's why we need to remember. We need to grow daily. We need to grow daily, get the freedom from the power of sin. And this is only accomplished as we receive the light of heaven, as we study the Bible, as we pray every day. And God will give us what? Holy Spirit. That's what happened with our foolish virgins. So here you see, in the Old Testament, the sinner had to bring the animal to the sanctuary. It could be any animal? The spotless, without defect, representing what? The sinless life of Jesus. And then what? He talks to the priest? No, he doesn't talk to the priest. He just put the hands in the mouth. And he just, he said what he needs to say. That symbolizes the transfer of sin from the sinner to the lamb. And then what he does? He cut the animal's throat to understand that the penalty of sin is what? Death. So just remember, when we sin, we basically, we are putting another set of nails on Jesus Christ. When we are sinning, we are like a bad person with a spear, just cutting the sight of Jesus Christ. That's what we need to think, that very seriously. Sin is one of the serious problems right now. And then, the blood was placed, the animal was offered on the altar, and the blood was still on the side. Symbolizing what Jesus happened. When the spear came in his side, 
is blood came to the ground. So basically, this is the copy of what Jesus went through. But it was taught in symbols in the Old Testament. Therefore, since we have a great, a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we don't have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with what? Confidence. Another version said, with boldness. Is that right? So that we may receive what? Mercy. Mercy. And find what? Thanks to help in our time of need. As I come to Jesus and said, Jesus, you know, I am constantly doing this and this and this. I need your help. We don't only receive forgiveness, but we receive this power to help us to continue overcoming and we stop sinning in our lives. For what the law could not do is that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, took the sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. You see, and this is area that we need to understand. Uh, many people don't understand this principle of the law. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? That would be made. I have no law in sin but by the law. For I have no law in love, except the law that says, Thou shalt not fall. If you have your Bibles in the book of Romans, let's see another one, because Paul, he had a perfect understanding about this. And let's read in the book of Romans, let's see, in chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, verse 20. Look at what he said here. Romans 3.20 says, Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is what? Knowledge of sin. The law does not save us. But the law helps me to know if I am sinning or not. Is that right? And remember, it is the law of God, not the law of men. Be careful. Because remember that we told you, for everything that God has created, there is a counterfeit. God created water, men created me. God created pure air, men created cigarettes. For everything. And you, we, that's what we need, the grace of God, so we can discover if this is right or this is wrong. What is written? What it means? And here is where we need to be careful about it. For I was alive without the law once, but once the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. You see, Paul said seven in seven ways. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yes, we establish the law. And that's what Paul said in Romans 3.31. You know, there is a... I, I listen to different versions about... Jesus got away with the law. Jesus did not get away with the law. You read it in Matthew different verses, and Jesus came to show us how to fulfill the law, how to be obedient to the law. Because the law cannot change, you know. Because, let's see, uh, you know what made a distinction? I'm from Peru, in South America, when you see, you go on the road, one lane going this way, another lane going on the opposite direction. The law don't mean nothing. If there is no cars coming on the opposite direction, three or four lines keep going in that direction. Once they see one car coming, everybody likes to that. The law does not exist. You come here to the United States, I got a friend whom I used to drive by that in Peru. He was a taxi driver in my country. He was a 50-year-old man. Can you imagine how was he driving? 
for 10 years he couldn't pass the driving test. <laughs> Aggressive driver. Not following the rules. Not following the lines. No, I mean, just a lot of things. <laughs> Can you imagine? So, the law gives the character of a country. Do you say so? Yes. The way that you behave, let's see, somebody sees you not drinking, not smoking, very peaceful, always respectful, always you do your work. What do they think about you? You are a good citizen, is that right? So does the law reflect the character of the person? So it's the same thing. The moral law reflects the character of God. And that's what is important for us. That's what he said. We establish the law. For as many as have seen without law, shall also perish without law. And as many as have seen in the law, shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are judged before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. So we are going to be judged by what? By the law. They tell about my friend, you know, my friend said, you know, why you didn't stop on the red light? Because I didn't see nobody on the sides. <laughs> because that's what I do in my country. Sorry. You didn't know the law, you have to pay the price. Is that right? And that's what it is. You don't know the law, I'm sorry. You are here preparing, we are preparing citizens for heaven. Is that right? So I have to be in harmony with the laws from heaven. Your friends, your relatives, maybe other church members might tell you something different. But I'm sorry, I'm preparing to be a citizen from heaven. I need to obey the law from heaven. Is that right? And we know already about this, for we shall appear before the judgment seat, so that each of us may receive what is due us for things done, what in the body, whether good or bad. So there is a judgment. We talk about it. For this is the covenant that I will make with the, the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my laws where? In and write them where? In and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. So the laws of God eventually needs to be what? In my heart, in my mind, needs to be part of me. Right? You remember where the mark of the beast is going to be placed? In the forehead means people are going to what? Have something replaced in their mind. Why in the hand? Because the hand represents the doing. So that's, I'm just giving you a preparation for what is coming in the next night. If you love me, what, what's it here? Keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. So is the Lord good? Yes. Better. So I thought that you have a I have just waked you up the interest to study the Bible more and more. And uh, you can pick up a summary as you read. It has a little things. And I'm sure you will have questions because when I studied this subject 17 years ago, I had a lot of questions. And it took me a while to understand several things, but uh, like the pastor said, what we know, we will tell you. What we don't know, we will pray, we will search for that. But I'm sure God has an answer for every question. For us. Okay? Why well, we don't just bow our heads and pray? Precious Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the truth that you have given us today. We pray that every word that was said today be receptive in each person's heart. That you lead us, Father, to be transformed by the truth. That you lead us, Father, to submit to the truth. Teach us, Father, to live by your word. For the statement us, it is written. And lead us to be, Father, day and day, more and more, drawing in faith to know you more and more, and enter into this promise of eternal life in God. Bless each one of us, and bless each person that they return to home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.